morning at the office, Troy was like, congratulations, man. And as Chris walked in, no one knew what they were talking about. And then Chris was just like waving his hand, like three. Like, you yeah, three. And we're like, what? And like, Chris, he's like, we're having another baby. And we was like, oh, congrats. He allegedly had a girlfriend who worked here. I think I'd seen them. You think you'd seen them? Do you know when that was? This, there would be this girl. Oh, I think, Do you know her name? I think it was Nikki. I think her name was Nikki. Oh, um, a brun uh, brunette. She had a pretty good body. So, the guys, when we sit in this common area, I don't know if you've been through this building or not. No. If you go down the hall, there's a little common area. Three little white squared tables. That's where our group sits. Usually all the groups sit together throughout the building. She would always walk by, and I would see him, like, he would always be on his laptop, and when she would walk by, he'd, like, look up a little bit and stare at him the whole time. And I didn't think anything of it, because if she was a fit girl, I'm like, okay, well, she is attractive. But I did see them talking differently down the hall. Because there's a northwest entrance to the building when you walk in there's a little monitor tv screen and it says oil prices they're up kind of like up two percent down you know mm -hmm. little updates and i did see him talking to her um in the hall and they were with it like pretty close too close to my bubble like closer than you and i are right now they were talking and i didn't think anything of it i because right where they were if you just go east a little bit there's a gas monitor room and that was what she did she would would make sure the gas monitors were calibrating and take care of that room. I was like, oh, maybe just talking about the gas monitor. But when they said he was having an affair with the girl at work, I'm like, there's only two females in this office I've seen him talk to. And one of them is impossible. Isn't Nancy. She works in the OCC, but she works with all of our group. I'm like, that's off the out of the question. I was like, I've seen him talk to her and I see him staring at her every time she walks by. And the guys that say it, they know she's attractive. And she's like, and she knows she knows she's attractive, so she's trying to get attention. <laughs> right. Because the fridge is in there and she'd put her food in there, but he would always stare at her awkwardly. So when they said that there was a girlfriend or a girl involved, that was the first person that came to mind. I'm like, yeah. it's her. I know it is her. And then a couple other guys said that they knew that it was her too. And then when they said that, I went to go check because there's a parts room you can get and her office is right there. Her name plate was ripped off the wall and her stuff was gone. I was like, okay, two and two together. It's mm -hmm. gotta be her. You remember about when it was you saw them talking at the back door? This might have been five months ago, maybe. It wasn't within all this happening. It might have been five months ago or so. I don't know. I'm like a visual person. I see things and then I, when something comes up, I can go back and reflect. I'm like, oh, well, I did see them talking all pretty closely. And I was talking to some other people because, you know, how something happens in the office or it's going to spread like wildfire. All right. And I was talking to some other guy and he's like, yeah, I saw them talking real close. Like, yeah, I saw too. I was like, gotta be her. She's gone now. So, But it was it was about five months ago or so. But she's been here a while. Four or five months. Any other time you remember seeing them? Interact? I've never seen them other than that one time I actually talked. I've seen them like make eye contact, but like never say anything. Because all the, there's like, there's the little squares and there's four seats and our group sits there and he would never talk to her when everyone else is around. But I did see him all the way down the hall one time. And I just didn't um, keep walking by and I was not going to say, hey, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. I saw it and just kept walking and thinking any of it. But I would never respect that they were dating or anything. I honestly thought he and his wife and the family like perfect family. They looked, they sounded like an ideal family. Everything was good. I didn't even know they were arguing until Troy told me. That was a clip from part of Anthony Brown's interview. Anthony was a co-worker of Chris Watts and he worked pretty closely with Chris who was on their team and I'll get to why I clipped it in a moment. I want to go ahead and tell you the two points that I'm going to be talking about in this video. They both pertain to things that NK said on her August 21st, 2018 phone interview with Agent Kevin Kobach. This interview was recorded and released in the Discovery, but the interview cuts off and then continues with just transcripts. So we have some of her voice, it cuts off and we don't hear her voice, but we got the transcripts my husband and I read through The them. two points I want to call attention to are number one, NK is going to explain and describe Anadarko's protocol that employees are supposed to follow when a leak or spill, you know, is possibly happening at an oil site. Number two, she is going to tell us that she does not even know what Chris's coworker Troy looks like. So pay attention to what NK is going to say about the procedure and protocol when reporting a potential leak or oil spill. We know that this didn't happen. We know that the leak was called in by Cody to Troy while he was meeting Chris in a Safeway parking lot to allegedly exchange a fire stick. So I just find that interesting. And then also just pay attention to how NK says that she doesn't even know what Troy looks like. I find that hard to believe because if you listen to 
the portion of Anthony Brown's interview that I clipped, and that's why I clipped it. He is straight up saying how the guys talked about NK when she would walk by, that she looked good. Chris would stare at NK, and he mentions the guys. We know that, you know, Troy was part of that team. He was known to be the closest one to Chris, the one that knew that Chris and Shanann were having marital problems. He offered Chris his couch. So I really just feel, in my opinion, allegedly, that NK is trying to distance herself from Troy. And to me, it leads the question, why? So do you guys think that NK really did not even know what Troy looked like? Or do you think she's distancing herself for some reason? And if she is, why do you think so? So um, I'm just going to go ahead and let this play. I'm con going to continue to talk and dig into the case and discuss it with, you know, Amber and everybody who wants to listen. So we'll talk soon. Um, but on Sunday, um, that phone conversation, that's the one where I heard the TV on in the background. And I was like, maybe he's staying up and waiting for her. Do you remember I told you guys that? Yes. I was like, I think I would, it was really weird that the TV was on because he talks to me when he's in bed and he wasn't in bed. Um, so that, that's, this is the same conversation. In that conversation, he told me, I have to go straight to the field tomorrow. And he was just like, you know, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to see you, get to see you in the morning. And I was just like, all right. And I was like, why? And just like, I got to go. Um, he's like, I got to go check out a site. And a, like a release in the morning and a release is like when the oil industry has like like a release of any type of like oil products or anything like from any of our equipment and I was like I remember asking him I was like well why would you have to go check out the release you're not part of the environmental team so when you say release is that he was like a spill kind of I mean I don't want to call it or like something's leaking or because yeah like something's leaking like okay any anything that's involved with the oil and gas industry anytime like so if so like if a piece of equipment leaks i mean you got to think they've got millions and millions of pieces of, equip of equipment like sure it happens and so he's like i have to go check out a release and i remember asking him i was like why do you need to go do that? You are not part of the environmental team because like our field operators, they will find releases and they'll call, they'll call our environmental team, which is like who I work for. They don't call me though, because I'm not the one that deals with that stuff, but they do call people like in my department and they say, Hey, I'm on this, this job site, you know, like a tank battery's leaking or like, uh, uh, oil tanks leaking or something like that and then we go out and assess it and clean it up and so on and so forth so so those are actually specialists that go out and clean this up and he's not one of these people no he's not but sometimes like those guys like his job is important to like shut in oil wells if there's a leak or like shut valves if there's a leak like he manages the equipment so so when he's like like i gotta go check out a release and i was like why are you going to do that? That's not your job. And he was like, I just need to go check out some of the equipment where the release occurred. Now that part didn't really seem odd to me because I mean, I'm, cause I mean, it makes sense that they're like, Hey, we have a release and an operator out and make sure all O. And he said he had to do a lock out tag out on the site. So, um, so that means that depending on where the release is, if it's near a piece of equipment that could be pot, pot, pote, have like potential okay could be potential have like potential energy to be hazardous what we do in the oil industry is what's called a lockout tag out and certified operative operators such as himself will go out there and they will put a lockout with a tag on the like the on the piece of equipment where you operate it um so that it cannot be in use like they'll de-energize the piece of equipment and like like shut it down and they'll like put a lockout tag out on it and then the point is is like so then if the environmental team comes in to clean up the mess nobody accidentally re-energizes this piece of equipment so while we're trying to clean up the mess because it could injure somebody does that make sense yes i got it okay so so now i'm remembering this just now and he was like like <clears throat> he's like i gotta go do a lockout tag out on some of the equipment for the release would that be something that would have been tracked certainly um there's a a lot of uh, paperwork and safety requirements that all sorts of things with each site. So if he was actually going to do a look lockout tag out, would that be something that I'd be able to look at Re record at Anadark and 
and know that he was actually assigned to do that? To be honest with you, probably. Again, I do not work with him. Um, but if there's one thing that I do know about Anadarko and I love, and I'm going to miss those guys so much, is the fact that they're very safe. Like, this is, this, they're one of the best oil and gas companies because of how safe they are. Um, so with that being said, I would be willing to bet that there's typically well, like you, a protocol. Right. So, I mean, there would have been to be a known problem for him to do a lockout tag out right yes so yes somebody would have had to call and said hey there's a in your guys words release um at this site and then some boss or whoever it may be would call chris and say hey chris i need you to go check this out if it's so you're like you're a skilled um equipment operator you make the decision you look at it uh out you lock it out if you have to. Then the environmental team comes and cleans it up. So there's got to be like a track. Yep. Record of all that's going on. Um, uh, I, I assume, I'm assuming that there probably is because lockout, tag out. Because if. I mean, it's, it's to save lives. So it's a very serious thing. Right. It's a safety thing. And like certainly certain people. Yeah. And like only certain people are authorized. Like I couldn't walk out, tag out something like I don't have right. that certification. Plus you're shutting down. It's not a piece of equipment that makes money. So yes, uh, somebody wants to know that, yes. right? Somebody there. Yes. There is a, I mean, there is, a, it's a business. I'm trying to think as you're as a business person, how they would, would do that. Because certainly if you're doing that, they want to get the team out there and clean up whatever is going on as soon as possible. So, so they can piece of equipment back in order and running as they can continue to pump oil. Understood. Understood. Well, and two, the thing, the other thing is the, like, he hadn't even looked at the site yet. So it's like, how do you know that you need a lockout tag out? I don't know. Um, that, and that's what I'm saying. That is, that's, mm, I mean, I like to, it's something for me to investigate. I'm just kind of trying to get it because you obviously know a lot. Yeah. More about the oil industry. I don't know anything about it. That makes sense to me. And that's good. Um, so that's good. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even like think of that till just now. So anyways, that is a question for Anna Darko. That is not a question for me. Yep. Uh, but um, anyway, so he told me he was going to have to do that. And I was like, all right, cool, you know, and then, um, and then, so he didn't show up for what, I mean, well, he did show up for work on Monday, but he supposedly was in the field. Um, and then Monday evening after my friend Jim left, that's when he, uh, Chris and I spoke on the phone in that first really extended conversation. Again, I don't know exactly what time it was. It was really late, but that first really extended conversation, that's when he started saying all that really creepy stuff. And then, um, he, in that conversation, I started questioning him and I was like, I was like, did you really, I don't even remember exactly what I said, but I asked him, I was like, did you really go to a job site this morning? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, and who told you to go there? And he, I think he said that his foreman, his foreman had either asked him or his like co coning man is this guy named Troy. I don't know Troy. I don't even know what he looks like, but I do know he exists. So he, he, I guess their foreman, four men, I guess their foreman relies on Chris and Troy to kind of like run their little part of the field. And so Chris was like, he was like, yeah, yeah. My foreman asked either he or Troy to go out there and go look at it. And do you know his foreman's name? Um, I don't, he's got a few of them, I think. Okay. I want to say, that's okay. I want, I want to say Luke Eppel, but I don't know. You're going to need to find that out with Anna Darko too. Okay. That's an Anna Darko question. That's all right. Um, and I know, I know who, but I, Luke is, and I know who Troy is. So we probably have already answered that. Um, okay. All right. Yes. Great. So, um, anyways, um, I told him to prove it because at this point, I mean, the things he had been saying, like the sheets was kind of weird, you know, what, what it was, it was the wedding ring comment that freaked me out. Like the sheets did like was kind of weird at the time. Um, and the fact that I thought he had maybe just lied to me about their separation, but it was like the wedding ring comment. Like he was so callous, like he was just ready to like cash it in and get some money. 
you were telling and i was just like and to prove what to prove that to prove that they had told him to go to the field right away okay so and he's like how do you want me to do that and i was like you can take screenshots of your anna darko phone and you can text them to me and did he do that and my, yes he did okay all right and he didn't he didn't send me the whole conversation but it there was two pictures of a release um followed intermediately with like there was text like on either side of the picture and um it looked like like i i didn't get everything he just sent me like part of their conversation and i didn't have dates and times on either like you couldn't see the dates and times of what he was sending me so he could have been sending me something that was like not recent not it could have been something from like weeks ago and i wouldn't have known but um he sent it to me and he sent it quick like it was just like instantaneously when i asked him for it like i was still on the phone with him and Right. And then I looked at it while I was still on the phone and it looked, it made sense with what he had been saying, but okay, the only thing in there, yeah, like it almost looked like someone else was originally going to go to that site and that it looked like the conversation someone had in, it, it looked like the conversation, someone, I interpreted it, the conversation that he had with his foreman and with Troy or whoever that, whoever was in that conversation, it looked like the conversation had occurred probably at some point over the weekend. And then it looked like Troy, I think, or somebody else in the field was originally going to go out there on first thing Monday. And he told them not to worry about it and that he would do it. Okay. And, and I, again, I don't know the exact words. Like I don't have the whole conversation again, but that is something you need to go to Anadarko for that. Yep. Okay. What's next? I'll do it again. Can I see? Do it to mommy. You're so cute. Bella, what's your name? Bella. Yeah. Yeah. Bella, what kind of princess are you? Cece, look at your hair. Good morning, Princess Cece. 